I've been making lots of AMA piano for my clients lately, and I wanted to break down for you guys the basics of an AMA piano track. I want to thank DistroKid for sponsoring this video and I'll have more on how they help me promote my music later on. This AMA piano track is actually part of a future sample pack that will be free, but today I'll be highlighting the basics of groove, melody, chords, and a little bit around the arrangement. But remember, if I go too quickly, you can download this project as a sneak peek over at the Patreon and get a gander for it yourself. All right, we're kicking things off at the tempo of 113 BPM. You find a lot of AMA piano tracks between sort of 110 and 115. So kind of like an up-tempo hip hop track. We're gonna start things off with our kick drum as that's gonna be the anchor point. It's just playing on the downbeats of the quarter notes. Nice and easy so far and so is the snare. The snare just fall in on the same downbeat as the kick and then the second snare falling on the offbeat. So if you've come from the pop world, this might already sound a little bit different to the beats you've been creating. But hopefully still quite easy to compose. Our second snare layer, our third layer of the groove falls as a push beat. What do I mean by push? Well, this first beat is playing ahead of the second downbeat of the kick. And you can hear there that the second snare layer is falling with the second snare that we just heard. I like to mix things up between the first and the second bar. And that means that our second snare layer is playing just a double push beat here. But that's the only thing that changes, but it just makes the beat a little bit more exciting. Our hi-hat layer is playing on the downbeat of that snare and of that kick. And then we have another hi-hat layer on the fourth beat. That hi-hat layer is super hissy. Basically you wanna roll off all of the low end of that hi-hat so you just have that kind of spray can kind of hiss. Our next hi-hat layer is kind of like an open hip hop sample, very short but you also wanna roll off all of the lows in your EQ. That's just following the same pattern as the first two hits of your second snare layer. And then finally, I have a very dynamic 16 beat hi-hat. What I mean by that is it's dynamic in the sense that the first transient is quite loud and then the second transient is quite quiet. I've done that with the gain. Double click on the sample and bring that gain down. You'll notice that I've preserved the transients to make that hi-hat almost clicky. It doesn't change up until the third bar to which I double time that hi-hat so it gets a little bit of a roll. Again, it just makes a more dynamic groove. Now you're left with something like this. It's maybe a different groove to what you've previously made, but it should be quite easy to follow. Now let's talk about our chords. We're in the key of G major, but we're starting things off with this big C chord. Check this out. I wanna keep my chords quite ghostly and pad-like. It means they'll sit lower in our track and the groove will kind of speak for the track more so than the chord progression. For AMA Piano, I've found that two short chords and one long chord works really well. So in this particular tempo, we could have two short chords in the first bar and one long chord. Or if you wanted to do more of a halftime thing, you can have two short chords that last bars one and two, and then one chord that last bars three and four. Under that first chord I have another chord layer playing the same thing in a higher octave but really quiet in the mix. This is because later on it's going to become my main chord progression in a lower octave.
Once you've got your chords down, I'm going to show you a trick that I highlighted in my last episode too. If you haven't watched it, it's all on musical ambience. Make sure you bookmark it for after this episode. On our melody group, we're going to choose the hybrid reverb. And with that hybrid reverb, what we're going to do is turn the dry wet up to 100%. This is going to make your chords kind of drift into each other like they're in a cavern of sound. And then what we're going to do is hit freeze and resample that audio. To resample, what we're going to do is just hit command T. And with this new audio track, we're going to choose resample. We're going to solo that group and just let it play as we record the audio. As that audio is playing, just hit freeze and you'll get a constant drone of noise. When you're happy that you've got a nice audio clip, you can choose to unfreeze that audio and then delete the hybrid reverb. I put that audio clip on a new track and just start to loop it over. And we've got something that sounds like this. I've pitched mine up and then I've applied Shaper Box. Shaper Box is gonna make sure that we get this nice movement within our drone chord. So inside Shaper, I'm just using a filter and then I'm using the width. So we're getting a little bit of filter modulation and a little bit of width modulation as well. If you don't have Shaper Box, you can do this by hand by just automating a low pass and the width tool with a line delay. I've actually got EQ8 and a line delay to add some extra width to my track and I'm using a little bit more reverb just to make it even more cavernous. I keep that super low in the mix and I move on to my more melodic sounds. First, the guitar. I've got this lovely preset from Ample Sound and you can see that I'm just using the same notes as the chords, albeit I've deleted just a couple of notes that I didn't feel like were working. I've rolled the first chord, meaning that it's not just a block chord like the second one you see here. The first chord is staggered. If you wanna save time, I've got a strum device over at the Patreon that will do this automatically for you. The first chord is strummed and so is the third chord and then I've used the same formula for bars three and four as well. This guitar is super wide with the align delay, a little bit of reverb once again. I'm rolling off any lows with the EQ8 and using a little bit of ping pong delay to get some movement with that guitar. You'll notice that it's in a higher octave and also really low in the mix. What I'm doing here is introducing you to a guitar sound that you'll later hear in the track. When we go into the main portion of the track, I'm switching that high passed guitar for something that's more central and with more of a lead sound. You can hear it playing with the delay drifting on into the background of the track and here it is with the chords. I like to add a couple more guitar chords. So underneath I have another instance of that ample sound guitar. And here I'm just rolling the notes of the third and fourth chords. So you kind of get an accent of those sounds. I also like to draw in a ghostly melody as well. For this, what we can do is highlight our chords and then hold shift and select the next clip. You'll notice that both the chords are displayed and so are the notes of my melody. And then I can play in or draw in something to the piano roll that matches the chord sequence that I have. Now for the final part of my track, which is the log bass or log drum as it's known in the Amma Piano world. This VST comes from producer sources. It's not a sponsor of the channel and I don't love it. Hence why I've made my own one for the Patreon. You can see how I went about making a log drum in my previous Amma Piano video. Once again, I followed the notes of the chords, this time by importing the chord and then just pressing zero on those notes so that I can see where the notes occur. I normally go for something that lands on the downbeats, follows the pushed feeling of the chords, but also has something rhythmical towards the end as well. And there we have it. I hope this episode was helpful and let me know what you want to see in 
future. Don't forget that this video was sponsored by DistroKid and I always use their promo and marketing tools when I'm releasing my track. You've got things like HyperFollow, which you can copy and paste into your TikTok or Instagram bios. It's gonna help your audience save your future tracks. But you've also got promo cards, which look really nice in your stories and shorts, alongside Vizzy, the video generator, which gives you really slick visualizations for your future tracks too. I don't stop talking about DistroKid. I've used them for years. And if you want 7% off your first year, then just use the link in the description below. Thank you so much for stopping by today and I'll see you next time.